week since our previous episode, we said, oh, we will talk to you when the schedule releases. It's still not released. We thought maybe Tuesday, you know, because Terry Mahajer tweeted that out, and then right away he said, oh, it's not coming out yet. So we are still waiting on this schedule. It's been announced it's coming at the end of this month. Let's hope. We're, I'm recording this on January 18th. It's coming out on January 19th. So don't, don't have much more of January left, but hopefully we can get the schedule release soon. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Charge On. As always, I am your host, Sean Green. No Rob or Nick today, just going to be me. We're just going to go over some of the brief stuff, the brief news, the small news that has come out. Uh, and, and we'll talk about a couple uh, different things regarding UCF football. We're going to talk schedule, kind of some things we want to see out of it. Uh, some transfer news that it maybe not is directly affiliated with UCF, but it kind of paints a picture for the bigger transfer landscape. And we'll talk a little bit of men's basketball before we get into all of that today, guys. A quick word from our sponsors, Bet Online. Bet Online remains your number one source for all your sports betting this season. Everything from the NFL playoffs to pro and college basketball, UFC, MMA, and more. You'll always find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends at Bet Online. With live betting options, free contests, and live scores for almost any sport or game imaginable. Bet Online is truly the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite leagues and events. Head to betonline.ag today or join your mobile device to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. That's B L E A V to receive your rewards. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, guys, like I said, listen, we've definitely hit the off season. We've hit kind of that point in the off season where there's not much news. It's this week specifically, the UCF coaches have been going around to, you know, places all around Florida, high school, all around Florida, Florida, keeping that relationship with coaches, offering a lot of 2024, 2025, 2026 guys and starting to ramp that up. And I think that's great. I think it to get, whatever coach you can to whatever high school, the specific regions. I know Gus was in Tampa. Uh, Darren Henshaw was going around the state in many different places. I think it's very crucial for the success of UCF to keep those relationships really tight because, listen, we had a time where the relationship with local coaches was not as tight as it is now. And when you have top prospects or in Florida, especially in the Orlando-Tampa greater area, Having that good relationship is going to bring those big time players here because you can have a relationship with the players and you can have a relationship with their families. But if you have a good relationship with the actual high schools and the coaches in the high school, that's going to even create those bigger bonds and keep a pulse on what is happening around the state and who the best players are around the state. So that's been going on this week, guys. So we're not getting a lot of news. We've got a little bit of time, right? We're waiting for this schedule release. National signing day is next month. So we've got stuff coming up on the horizon to talk about. But this schedule release, I think we've been kind of talking about it and speculating what we want, what we want to see. But there's a a known thing for sure, right? Our first three games, as it is right now, is open season at home against Kent State. On September 2nd. That's your opening game. Then in the second week. You're traveling to go play Boise State. That's been on the schedule for a while now. All these games have been on the schedule. Going to Boise State to play a tough team up there. And then you got Villanova at home the next week. Good thing is. These are all Saturday games. So you get first three weeks of the season. You're getting Saturdays. And most likely you're getting Saturdays. For your entire season. Because now of what you're playing and the teams you're going to be playing. So that's going to be a really good shift from last season where we started the season first five or six weeks doing Thursday, Wednesday, Friday, etc. And who knows? By the time in September, we don't know what will happen, but you're starting the season off with three Saturdays. I think it's crucial the way that, that ske- the schedule is played out, not saying it's three easy games, but especially – Coming into the Big 12, it will be really good to start off with, listen, call it like it is, lesser competition than what you're going to be playing. 
we don't know what that fourth week is going to be. We're assuming after Villanova, you're getting a you are you're getting a Big Twelve team. We don't know if it you know who knows what it could be. It could be TCU. It could be Texas. It could be Oklahoma. It could be Kansas. You have no idea what that fourth week is. So I think it's it's a very interesting thought process. Is listen, you could be going into that first Big Twelve conference game three and zero. Now you could also go be going into it two and one, and your mindset has shifted. I think it's a little early, but and we again with spring ball on the horizon, a lot of quarterback talk is going to be you know had. I mean, John Rice Plumley baseball started this week. I think it's starting today. There's a lot of question marks. Baseball is starting to ramp up for their season today. John Rice is doing baseball. We have a lot of quarterback questions. I think the good thing is as fans and as media, we're going to be able to potentially see how these quarterbacks that are playing in spring are going to react to that. So who knows? Who knows who the star is going to be versus Kent State? I think it should be a very interesting thought process at the beginning part of the season to have those three games to start. Listen, I was looking at Colorado's first five games, right? Because the big talking point right now is Dion and, you know, what games he's starting with. And he's got a gauntlet, man. Like, Colorado might start one, five, or two, and four. And it's not saying that a team isn't as good as its record, right? Because, like, you know, Colorado, let's be real, I think they're going to be a much improved team. But when you're starting out like that, that can really kind of mess depending on the program. I'm I, I'm assuming Dion will keep his his kids kind of focused. But if you're starting off with a couple losses, that can really mess with the mindset of a football team. Like, okay, how good are we really? Why are we struggling this early? What the heck? I think with UCF, listen, last season you st- you had an early loss to Louisville, and they went on a, a, a good spree of wins. Now, listen, we saw it. We kind of blew out some really bad teams, and then we really saw what we were made of against, you know, you know, we saw ECU kind of got their footing back, beating teams like Cincy, like Tulane, like Memphis, and then you lose one to Navy. So it's not always perfect, but I think this is a really good start to a season with Kent State, Boise, and Villanova to get some easier games out of the way to where you can, you know, test things, work on things you need to work on. And go from there. So I think it'll be very interesting. We are just waiting by the day for when this schedule actually come out. And when it does, we will be posting an emergency pod to get you those games and our thoughts on each matchup and even some early predictions, like I said. But that's kind of it with the schedule. We we have no other information. The Big 12 is literally the last conference in college football, it seems, to release their schedule which is very frustrating but again there's a lot of moving parts like and we I we all understand that it's frustrating cuz we just want to see the schedule but listen with the Texas Oklahoma situation and potentially only staying the year they might want to get certain matchups to make sure they get that matchup for this specific year i think the one we all want to see is Oklahoma UCF and i think if we're looking at it where, okay, Oklahoma's going to be leaving in 2025, and they're only going to be there for one year, or 2024, excuse me, you want to make sure that UCF and Oklahoma play this year. That's that's a must, right? Because I don't know, there's not many TV games where you automatically look at it and say, okay, this is going to pull big numbers. UCF, Oklahoma will pull huge, huge numbers. And I saw some people saying, oh, you know, I think that'd be really cool for UCF to open with Texas, right? That that would be really cool. I listen. They opened the bounce house. It would be really cool for the first Big Twelve team to play Texas, and I agree with you, and I understand that. But I think there's just a little bit more oomph to see Oklahoma come into the bounce house with DG as their uh, starting quarterback. I think that is very enticing, and I think. That's kind of what the Big 12, I think that's what the holdup is, is making sure you get the best matchups that you possibly can where you might not have Texas and Oklahoma a year after now. So get the best matchups you can with those teams and and then go from there. So I think that's what the holdup is, and hopefully the schedule releases soon. All right, with that being said, let's go on to kind of our second topic of today's podcast, which is 
the grass isn't always greener. And I think a lot of us UCF fans know that from years of certain players leaving, thinking, oh, I'm going to have a better time at this situation, or I'm going to have a better career at this situation. Um, Jalen Robinson yesterday announced that he is entering the transfer portal from Ole Miss. And listen, we didn't bl- I, I, I didn't blame him wanting to leave UCF. I think, especially during that offseason, Dylan Gabriel had already announced that he's transferring. There were, you, you had Mikey Keene, but J- Flash didn't play most of that year. He was injured for most of that year. So he announced he was transferring, went to Ole Miss, didn't have a lot of success at Ole Miss. Now, that is a lot due to injury, but it's also, when you look at Ole Miss and Lane Kiffin, they do recruit a lot of wide receivers, and that depth chart is stacked. A lot like UCF now. I mean, UCF recruits a lot of wide receivers. They keep a lot of guys in that room, and there's very little t- chance to get an opportunity if you're not playing or if you're not showing out. So Flash announced he's entering the transfer portal, and it's not that surprising if we're being completely honest, but, and I think my question, I'm pretty sure he has to sit out a year because he already used the one-time transfer rule. But now, if somebody could correct me on that, I'm pretty sure he has to sit out a year. But with that being said, the grass isn't always greener. And I think that's the main takeaway, is listen, all the players that have played for UCF, I have nothing but love and respect for them. They brought their blood, sweat, and tears to the university. They worked their butt off to try and help this team win and to do well. So whenever a player enters the transfer portal and says, I'm leaving, right? I'm going to go to a new situation. It's always, I want the best for that player. Now, if you leave on bad terms, there is maybe a little animosity. If you just listen, say, Hey, I want to do what's best for me. I think this is best for me in this moment. All nothing but love for UCF. Then it's all love back, all love back. Do what you got to do in Flash. There, and nothing wrong with Flash. Was I a little surprised? Yes. But you had to do what you had to do. Went to Ole Miss, thought he was going to perform really well. Ultimately, just didn't get on the field. But I think, as UCF fans, this is kind of what we have to look at in the grand scheme, right? You have guys like Jeremiah Jean-Baptiste, Ryan O'Keefe, Matt Lee, Devonte Brown, those are the key guys. I kind of left and said, "Listen, for me, I'm gonna I'm gonna ship out." I know Matt Lee. There was a lot of people on Twitter like, "Why would you go to Miami?" And you can't speculate. I mean, we can. It's probably money. They're probably paying him a lot of money. He was one of the best centers in college football last year. They probably paid him a bag, right? And that's and that's okay. But if you can't fault a player for what they're doing for themselves, right? And if it ultimately doesn't work out. Yes, you can say, listen, the grass isn't always greener, folks. Like, you had it really good here. Jeremiah Jean Baptiste, he would have been a a really high draft pick with us, right? But when at the same sentiment, right, you could say grass isn't always greener, but then you look at Tatum Bethune, and he's really stuck out at Florida State, and he's built a bigger name for him than he was at UCF. And he's going to be, in my opinion, a top top three-round draft pick. In the NFL draft. Not saying he couldn't have here. I think he was on that path and it showed in his play that he was going to be a high draft pick. But for him, he thought, I'm going to go to Florida State, which is in the Power Five right now, get shown on that stage, and my name will be out more. And it's worked out well for him. So you can't fault, you can't fault him for making that decision for him. And you can't fault any of these players for making a a decision for themselves. But at the end of the day, you have to do what you think is best for you and go from there. Do I know where Jalen Robinson is going to go? I have no earthly idea. I mean, I thought Ole Miss was a great situation for him. I thought it really, I thought it would work out, but that's the thing with these, this transfer portal craziness, right? You can go to a good situation But a lot of things can happen. You can get injured, get stuck behind the depth chart. Then new guys come in. You hit the transfer portal, get more guys. And then the school that you just transferred to, 
you have three guys ahead of you, and you're not going to get on the field. So I have no idea where Jalen Robinson will go. I'm assuming there are a lot of teams that could use him if he's healthy. I think he's he is a premier wide receiver in college football. I think he is an NFL wide receiver. He's got the speed. He's got the talent. If you just got to get him on the field. But again, when you look at some of these guys, and I I know a lot of UCF fans might get frustrated and be confused. When why why did Matt Lee go to Miami? When why did Devonte Brown go to Miami? Like why didn't they stay here? I think you can. Be confused and know, listen, the grass is not going to be always greener. But no, for some players, it will work out. But in Jalen Robinson's case, I think, in my personal opinion, I think he was wrong to leave. I think he had a great situation here. Now, Grant, I know with the quarterback problems we had this last year, he probably would have transferred out this year anyway, as Ryan O'Keefe did. But I think wide receivers especially who are at their schools right now. I think wide receiver is probably one position in college football where you need to be very careful with, number one, where you sign out of high school, and number two, be very careful where you transfer to if you are transferring from your original school because wide receiver is a very premier and very illustrious position in college football, and teams are always looking for them. So if you transfer out, you will find another spot. But the, the real question is, if you transfer out, are you making the right decision for yourself in the long term? Christian Leary, right, transfers to UCF or says he's going to transfer to UCF from Alabama. Then says, you know what, never mind. I'm going to Georgia Tech. Well, Georgia Tech has got a couple more wide receiver transfers after they sign Christian Leary. So it's, what what's the give and take here? Do you want to... Be stuck behind, or do you like? Are you trying to go in a spot where you're going to be the number one guy? Which I, Christian Leary clearly thinks he's the number one guy, and that's that's fine, right? If that's what you think, then you got to go do what you got to go do. But you got to be careful and very and be very meticulous about where you're going, what situation you're going into. Matt Lee, I love Matt Lee. Again, I think he's one of the top five best centers in college football. Struggled a little bit last year, but the numbers don't lie, in my opinion. Like, he didn't look like the same Matt Lee from the year prior, but the numbers show that he he was even better. Now, granted, that was probably the entire offensive line. You kind of, it just, it, it took, it had a down year. But going to Miami, listen, I think he's thinking, I want to get drafted in X position, or I want to set myself up in X position. And I think a lot, the big question and for a lot of these players is how is UCF going to perform in the Big 12? I think certain players think, listen, I'm going to show out in the Big 12. Our first season is going to be great. And I think some pl- players are like, I don't want to risk my draft status on going into the Big 12 and potentially not having a good team because that can ultimately kill your draft stock. Is If you're not having eyeballs on your team now, if you're a great player, you're going to get found. But I think in certain situations, some players might be like, I want to go to a quote-unquote premier program where I know I'm going to get eyeballs regardless of our record. And I think that's probably why you see Matt Lee and Devontae Brown going to a place like Miami. And O'Keefe is a different situation. O'Keefe, with the wide receivers, it's I want to go where I'm going to be a wide receiver one, which O'Keefe kind of was, but I want to make sure I'm setting myself up in a good position. But the grass is not always greener, folks. It's not, and it proves it. A year later, Jalen Robinson is back in the transfer portal. And and you'll see, who knows, in a year from now, who we saw goes into the transfer portal and then is back in next year. You don't know. That's college football now, and that's how it's going to be. But you're seeing it. And it's becoming a thing where our players that enter the portal now back in the portal. So hopefully Jalen Robinson flash finds a good home for himself. I really want him to thrive. I think he is a phenomenal player. Um, And I I think he can really do some damage somewhere. All right, final topic before we close out this pod is men's basketball. Obviously, had a tough loss against Tulane. I mean, listen, UCF is down some very key, important players. That's kind of the struggle right now is 
you're trying to make that tournament push to to get to March Madness, and you don't have some of your best players. I mean, that's kind of the problem. But they've got a big matchup in less than a week against number one Houston, a team that they brought to basically the end of the game. They had a good chance to win it. They lost by six, but I think I still think they have a good chance to win. But there's been kind of like a Twitter war the last couple days about a lot of Big 12 schools coming at UCF fans because a lot of UCF fans said they think they can compete year one in the Big 12. I'm going to be honest, guys. Again, I'm a UCF fan. I cover UCF. Uh, We do this every week. But I think we have a really good men's basketball team. I think in the Big 12 specifically, I I don't think we would be anywhere as good as what we are right now. Would we give teams fits? Absolutely. But I don't think UCF fans... now. I am not putting down any UCF fan that thinks, oh, they would compete this year in the Big 12. They did beat Oklahoma State. That is a fact. In overtime, they did. But what we have to remember is teams that are in the Big 12, it is the best basketball conference in the world, in college basketball. In college basketball, it is the best conference. The Big 12 is. The best way I can describe it for people that, because I know, I understand, right? Basketball is not as big as football, especially in college. We've looked at the numbers. Our, the basketball episode that we just did didn't pull the same numbers. It's understandable. I mean, football, college football is just way more popular. But for those of you that are not aware, right, think of it in the football terms as if UCF was going to the SEC in football. In year one, what do you think UCF's record would be? Do you think UCF football would do really well in the SEC year one? I would probably say no. That's that's just a fact, right? So in basketball, I think a lot of things would have to happen. They would have to get some really good transfers. They'd have to keep Hendricks. Darius Johnson would have to take a huge leap, which I think he has. He just hasn't been able to stay on the floor. But the problem with UCF basketball right now is they're not getting those rec- that the top 100 recruits, right? Taylor Hendricks was that player, right, for them this year, which is if you've seen, that's why UCF has kind of been relevant. The team, the overall team is good, but Taylor Hendricks is going to be a top 30 player if he decides to go to the NBA draft. He's going to be a top 30 player selected. So UCF, in part, gets more national respect because they have that type of player on the roster. People start watching UCF. And then, again, then you get a good basketball team. And it helps because they are winning games. And they're beating solid opponents. If UCF were in the Big 12 this season, they'd be a lower-pack basketball team. I don't think they'd be last. But they they wouldn't be middle of the pack. They wouldn't be. And that's just being completely honest, guys. Again, I want UCF basketball to thrive. I am just waiting for the day that UCF basketball is a top 25 program. And I think it can get there. The problem is they have not recruited those top guys. I think I'm a a big part of that. Probably 90% of the problem of that was they're in the American Athletic Conference. You're going to the best conference in college basketball. You are bound to get some of the top recruits that say, I want to go to the Big 12 to play college basketball. The best players are in this conference. I'm going to go to UCF. It's bound to happen. Taylor Hendricks was the first one to really, out of high school, say, listen, I'm going to UCF. The biggest recruit UCF basketball has ever gotten. It's only bound to happen where we get a couple more of those. The best college basketball programs, listen, I told you last week, right? You want to build your, you got to get incoming freshmen that are four or five star talents, number one. Then your quote unquote lesser talent that aren't those four or five star guys, you need to keep them on the roster and develop them and really keep them going and developing and going through. That's what makes the best teams in college basketball. Right now, UCF, this season specifically, is an amazing season. They're having a great year, and who knows where it can go. 
But the problem that we're going to have is when guys like Taylor Hendricks dip and leave the program because they go to the NBA draft, you need to retool and reload with similar talent. And I don't think UCF's at that point yet. So in this case of, oh, UCF can compete in the Big 12 right now, no, they cannot. Next year is going to be probably a very down year. Because again, you are going to the best conference. And not just that, think about the teams that are going with us. Houston's also going to the Big 12. Houston is, now Grant, and Houston's right now the number one team in the country. But you've got Houston going with you to the Big 12, plus all the teams that the Big 12 have right now. So I get it. Optimism is good. It's good to have optimism about these things. But in that same token, you have to be realistic. It's going to take a couple years for UCF after this year. Now, if Taylor Hendricks stays for the first year in the Big 12, I, I would have a different thought process. You have your stud of a player that will keep you in these, some of these games. And then you ha- already have a good supporting cast. Now, we're getting, remember, you're going to have to retool. Some of these guys are seniors that you tr- had transfer in. So you're going to have to go get some more seniors or go get some really high transfers that just want a new spot. And UCF can retool. But he, Taylor Hendricks probably most likely is a goner. He's going to go to the NBA draft. And you have to retool. And so I think Johnny Dawkins understands he... Listen, you're at a much better conference now. Your recruiting should go up significantly for the next class. Not so much this class coming in next season, but the class after that. And go from there. So I think for all UCF fans, have the hope. Stay stay consistent with it. And don't get in Twitter wars with the other Big 12 schools. You have to understand, they're, they are really good at basketball right now. And not saying we aren't, because anybody can get beat on any given day. We beat a Big 12 school this year. But you also have to look at their schedule is a gauntlet compared to what we're facing. If you thought Tulane was hard, imagine facing Kansas State, Kansas, Oklahoma in two weeks. Consistent, back to back to back. That's that's a gauntlet. But I, listen, I think UCF it could be one of the quicker teams to get there. I mean, again, it's Orlando. It's Florida. People are going to want to come here. And you're you're going to see, Johnny Dawkins is a really good recruiter. They're going to get some good top 100, top 200 recruits to come in here and really make a name. Because once Taylor Hendricks, if he does go to the NBA and he does get drafted, there's going to be other guys that are like, I go to UCF and get drafted in the first round of the draft. Just go to UCF and perform. So that's, that's about it, guys. That's... Uh, I, I'm really excited for this game. Hopefully UCF can kind of pull out that dub against the number one team. Don't get your hopes up, but I think they can do it. Hopefully they are healthy. That's the number one thing. All right, guys. Like I said last week, we'll be to you. Hopefully next week uh, the schedule's released. I, I'm hoping so that we don't have another episode where we're not talking about the schedule. We are just waiting for the schedule to get released. I know National Signing Day is coming up in a month. Uh, a couple people are announcing where they're going to go, specifically the Harris Twins. We are, you know, I keep talking about that. I think it's between UCF and Arkansas, I think is last I saw, but we are keeping our eyes on that. And thank you for the continued support. Um, last month was our biggest month yet, and we just got all those numbers, and we really appreciate everything from you guys. The fandom is amazing. Uh, and we're going to keep bringing you content each and every week. If you haven't, follow me on Twitter at Sean MR Green. I'm pretty active on there um, every week, so it, you'll be able to see when our pods drop and any UCF uh, news that gets posted on that given day. All right, guys, this has been Charge On, presented by Bet Online. We will see you next week. Uh-huh.